Welcome, welcome to lead code, lead code problem solving stream. We will start shortly. First, I want to uh, check um, some new things with chats. So Twitch chat versus YouTube chat. It should be possible to write something in one and the other should get automatic uh, copy of that. Hi from YouTube. It's called a relay option. And the other thing is that I want to add programming tag. Relay option doesn't seem to work. Bot. That's a pity. Okay then. I want to I want to solve some dynamic program. I want to solve some dynamic programming problems today from lead code. I will start with burst balloons. Mm, that somebody asked me about it like yesterday and looks cool. Like I know how to solve it. I will just explain a solution and implement it. I will find some other problems maybe. Mm, recent DP problems. And I will implement solutions for problem line of wines from the third DP lecture. That there's no such problem in lead code, but still it's a valuable DP problem. Uh, hello everybody in the chat. So I don't know if comments work or not. Uh, I don't want to care about it much today. Also, as an experiment today, I'm not displaying the chat in bottom right corner. And I'm going to more work and code rather than answer questions. We'll see how it goes. The first problem is burst balloons. There are n balloons uh, numbered from left to right. Everyone has some value. And when you burst a balloon, you get some number of coins. That is the number right written on the left balloon times this one times right neighbor. Here, left and right are adjacent indices of i. After the burst, the left and right then become adjacent. adjacent. So the i disappears and uh, the next two they are glued to each other. Find the maximum total coins you can collect by bursting the balloons optimally. And we should assume that balloon minus 1 and n, those outside the array, have value 1. Mm, here's an example. If you are given array 3158, it's apparently optimal to first remove 1. For that you get 3 times 1 times 5, which is 15. Then remove 5, you get 3 times 5 times 8. Then remove 3, and the left neighbor is treated as 1, and so on. And um, we'll start by analyzing what can happen. What is the name? Burst balance. Number 312. Mm. Hello, sir. Please solve the problem from scratch rather than using the function in C++. I don't know what you mean, to be honest. What function in C++ shouldn't I use? Like, uh, there is some array. And after I burst a balloon, it disappears. Say that numbers are 2, 3, uh, 7, 5, 10. Then it disappears. The remaining ones are 2, 3, 5, 10. And because the limit in the problem is small, like n up to 100 or maybe 500, uh, we should first think about dynamic programming maybe. And for that, 
it's a bit we shouldn't just go from left to right for example because uh, we might pop balloons in some very strange order like on the right on the left on the left on the right so going from left to right isn't a good idea then maybe we should use dp of lr that's that might be reasonable but after popping balloon number seven what we should read what dp we should read it might make sense to iterate over balloon i to pop and then to say that we merge the left part up to i minus one and the right part from i plus one but it isn't a good idea because after that when you pop this one uh, the value of free will be used so it matters we can't just take this dp of i plus one to r to just read this value because it depends on what is there on the left uh, because of that we need to do something else and from time to time we should consider analyzing the process backwards and it will work here hmm. instead of thinking which balloon i should pop first i will think which balloon i should pop last so when i have that say two three seven five ten i will say okay maybe i'm going to pop this one f last for that i will get score one times three times one because i imagine that there is one and one at the ends of array and uh, because this is my last move so all of that was apparently removed before that before that this three is non-removable because i say this is the last one the last balloon to pop and i can just read dp from this interval because this interval knows what is on the left it's this free that cannot be destroyed be, uh, before the interval 7, 5, 10. When we iterate, when we imagine the process backwards and we iterate over the last balloon to pop, it makes sense to take, um, so the, when we iterate over this balloon i, the last one to pop, I will say that the score is a of i, where a is, let's say, that array from the input, times a of uh, here this is l this is r times a of l minus one times a of r plus one this is the score we get from popping this balloon plus before that we have dp of l i minus one plus dp of i plus one Mm. and this is dp of some interval like this one is the best score we can get here assuming that number on the left the next number on the left and the next number on the right they will not be destroyed before this whole interval is destroyed and i'm going to just code that mm. In lead code in C++ this is two-dimensional array let me create n to make code a bit shorter this is array of size n times n now in some order I will iterate over elements I'm not yet sure if this is a correct order. I will think about it at the end. And here I will return dp of 0 n minus 1. For the last, I iterate over the last balloon to pop. dp of lr is maximum of itself. And. Uh, I prefer to name this array say A. It will be shorter. A of I 
times a of l minus 1 times a of r plus 1 plus dp of l i minus 1 plus dp of i plus 1 r. Uh, there are some small issues with that, like this might not exist. This might not exist, it can be outside the R, similar for this one, maybe I minus 1 is smaller than L. And then it's some extra thing to write, L, then 0, and then that, otherwise 0. R is L minus 1, you see if yes, then 0, otherwise that. Mm, and here L is smaller equal I minus 1 if yes than this otherwise 0 and I plus 1 smaller equal R that otherwise 0 mm. I don't want to put 0 here instead it's 1 things outside the array are 1 I miss some bracket here we go. And I didn't close something else. Output sixty three, expected one six seven. It's not correct. Test case. Let's try it for just a single five. <coughs> oh, I said that I need to fix this order. So dp of lr uses dp, values dp for smaller intervals. Like, for example, from l to i minus one here. So we want all those shorter intervals to be already computed. Because of that here I will iterate with L decreasingly so that when L is 0 already values for L 1, 2 and so on are computed. Then let's change it back to the sample input. Run code. And it's correct now. I will submit. The complexity is of n cubic. Uh, runtime error. Okay, the input can be empty. Mm. Then this is not the correct thing to say. No elements exist. I need to say if a empty, return zero. Can we say the largest element of array will remain at the end so that we get that and then we remove backwards? Why would that be optimal? Why should we uh, leave the maximum element to the end? I don't think it will be optimal. As I said multiple times, don't care about those things. Coding challenges aren't about squeezing your solution to be like, just a bit faster than others. There is there are some constraints, some time limit decided to check your complexity and that's it. I don't recommend here trying to make it faster than say 99% of people. It's a waste of time. Mm. Another thing that I'm trying to do today is oh, why is that? is I record this stream as well. Not only I stream, but also I record that to my computer. I'm going to um, cut some, let's say, interesting parts to then upload to YouTube. Uh, another thing is that on Twitch, uh, th this is experiment. I think that this code is quite interesting thing for Twitch not really for competitive programming. And I wanted to see uh, the, the views, and the views aren't very good on Twitch. I'm just one watching now. What means I think from the next stream I will just uh, like 
I will abandon Twitch and I will just stream on YouTube. Then I don't have those issues with chat. Very well explained. Thank you. So those are the two things that I experiment with. Mm. And yeah, today I don't want to care too much about those chat comments, stuff like that. This will be for another boring stream. That will be, I guess, next week. We'll see. Let's find some other dynamic programming problems on lead code. So there is stack dynamic programming. Something recent. What do we want? Chat, do we want medium or hard? Pogchamp. Oh, we have somebody on Twitch. Um, what do you guys prefer? Something harder or easier? Mm, I will take a look at my GitHub wiki. In the meantime, I think medium one for medium to hard. Eventually, I will have automatic polls. Uh, medium it is. The longest common subsequence. This sounds very boring. If it this one medium, one hard, alternate, maybe. Uh, this is too standard. Number of dice rolls with target sum. I like rolling dices. You have d dice. Each die has f faces, number to one, two, up to f. Return the number of possible ways. Modulo that to roll the dice so the sum of the face up numbers equals target. This is just. This is a problem eleven fifty five. This is just. Should I post something like that on? in the chat, I guess so. Uh, this is just like an upside problem, where what is important after some, some, after some rolls is what is the sum so far, not really the values, and this will be the dimension of my DP. And I can code that very quickly. I don't think it's too interesting. So, because after rolling, say, three times and if we get two five and four so the sum is 11 it's the same thing for us as if we roll three three and five and then we get some 11. we care just about the number of those because of that dp of s will be the number of ways and here the number of ways because they ask us for the number of ways to get some s so far I could create here another dimension for like, the number of rolls. I can start with this dp, but anyway, I do it roll by roll, so I only need the previous. Uh, I need the previous row of this two-dimensional matrix, so I will just create one. Mm, dp I will call it ways of target plus one. Ways of zero is one. Initially, there is one empty way to create some zero. Wait to get some zero. For repeat how many times? D times. Mm, new ways. There will be new array that I will create. And then ways, I overwrite ways. At the end, I return the number of ways to just get target. This size is enough to store sums from zero to target. I don't care about bigger ones. Mm. Sums, what are um, the constraints? 30, 30, 1000. I think that should be enough. We'll see. After implementing loops, we will see what is the complexity. For already, sum already from zero to target for every outcome now, so now pipes, I think, is the name of 
the new number that appears on the die pipes smaller equal f there are f faces if already plus pipes smaller equal target i don't care about bigger sums then ways of no, new ways already plus pipes plus equal ways of already this could be done with just one array if we iterate in a good way but this is easier there is module right yeah so i will create modulo and here we should do i will create a helper variable not to repeat code tmp plus equal dot if tmp is greater equal mod tmp minus equal mod i could use modular operator but this is faster modular operator is slow and so i'm used just i more often do this if the complexity should be should be what o of d times target times f which is good enough for the constraints, but it's possible to solve it faster, so maybe I will do that in a moment. Accept it. Mm, what's up in the chat? Uh, are you going to write the final contest? What do you mean with contest? DP with bitmask? I don't want to touch DP with, the, with bitmask now. It's a separate thing that I will make a lecture on eventually. Hello, Rishop. So that's that, and the other thing is that for that I need some drawings. This was what? Number of dice rolls. Number of dice rolls. Problem number 1155. The thing is, if you have some array, and you move to another array and for every this number will be the sum mm, I did that a bit no, it's, it's not too nice I want the same like s spacing uh, no this number will be the sum of those because let's say that f the number of faces is free then if the sum this is some zero one two three five uh, four five and so on then this number will be the sum of those underlined um, underlined places this is how my algorithm works and then to compute this sum quickly i can use prefix sums i could say prefix of target plus one from or I could just use prefix on the array ways target and here it will be ways of i plus equal ways of i minus one and here modulo I will create a function for that at a plus equal b if a greater equal mod a minus equal mod this adds the second number to the first one. So we'll add mm, ways of i, ways of i minus one. This computes prefix sums. Then for new sum from zero up to target, new ways of new sum is it's the sum. It should be the sum from new sum minus f to new sum minus one, which is ways of new sum minus one minus ways of new sum minus f minus one. This sum is the same as this difference on prefix sums. Then I can remove that. 
And again, we need to care about going outside the array. I will change that to one because the zeroth element will be zero anyway. And here, new sum minus f minus one greater greater equal zero. If yes, then that. Otherwise, zero. It's not the prettiest code, but it does the job. Submit. And now the complexity should be, oh, integer overflow, uh, because I need, if I need a subtraction. Mm. Here I will say if new ways of new sum is smaller than zero, new ways of new sum plus equal mod. Similarly to addition, this is how you can avoid module operator. Accepted. Now it's faster than 99% of people, but again, the complexity matters and you should understand your complexity. Mm. Hi, Aman. Hello, Miłosz. What keyboard do I use? Uh, some random Dell keyboard. Uh, there, in the de video description, there are frequently asked questions. You can find some answers there. Do you think that hard lead code questions are challenging enough for someone at your level? I'm really curious to hear that. Um, some coding interview problems are hard because they're very different than competitive programming problems. I need to think about those. They are not standard. Similarly, in my um, when I was in university, there was some algorithms subject that was generally easy for me, but some exam questions were very hard because just I'm used to do a lot of competitive programming and all the techniques there I know. But if the problem just requires some thinking and it's not about just applying perfect sums and FFT, then I'm not that good in that. And sometimes I need a lot of time to figure out a solution, especially with caring about like constant space complexity, stuff like that is very, very unusual in competitive programming. Mm. Well, that was that was medium, but also we solved, I guess, hard version. Maximum Sabari sum with one deletion. I guess the title says what the problem is about. I return the maximum sum for a non-empty Sabari with at most one element deletion. Mm, no, that without deletion, it's called, there is Cadane's algorithm for that. What is that? Maximum summary. Paste. Keep text only. How do I paste? Mm, merge. I'm not sure. Max sub array with one deletion. Let's see. One, one, six. Mm. No, normally we go from left to right. And it's kind of a DP that at every moment we know what is the maximum possible sum so far and also maximum uh, found already sabarai then we try to continue that and now possibly in that thing that we already started we have one element that is erased already as i always say what is important so far after we make some decisions when we are say here either we have a sabarai that we continue or we have a subarray that we continue, but already one element is deleted. Or maybe something was taken on the left and it's a possible answer. Then I will store that in variable best possible answer so far. This thing will be uh, like, this will be sub no deletion. 
and also there will be suffix that already has a deletion and I need to uh, move between those states Again, it will help me to create n makes code shorter mm. answer is the subbar needs to be non-empty after deleting one element if it could be empty I would say that answer is zero now I will say that answer is array of zero I guess length is at least one cool. mm. in particular I can take the first element Normally I would here put some minus infinity, but it's safer to not think about infinity and just use that. Then suffix no deletion is array of zero, suffix deletion is zero, I guess. And then we move from the first number. Mm. We could also here move from the zeroth number, but I would need to initialize those two differently. Uh, and then what? New. If I already deleted something, then I can say that self deletion is max of. If element was already deleted in some suffix, I can expand it by one. So suffix deletion is changed to suffix deletion plus a of i, and that is also saved like suffix with already one element deleted. I actually, I will run, write this as suffix deletion is max of deletion already plus a of i, or suffix without deletion and without a new number. So this means this thing means remove the i element. Then suffix no delete is max of suffix no delete plus a of i or just maybe AFI itself. Mm. Answer is max of answer, sub delete, sub no delete. Do I have to remove? With at most one element deleted. So it's okay to say that element was deleted or not. Turn answer. I you can always change the name of the argument. Does it work? It does. We could also solve a problem with k possible elements deleted. Then it's like right now we had something like int dp of n2. Just I didn't start the whole array, I just remembered last two elements where dp of n0 means zero elements were deleted, dp of n1 meant um, one element is deleted. We could also make this thing, then complexity will be of and k. So k is given in the input and we say at most k elements can be deleted. And that was problem maximum subarray sum with one element deletion. Hello, the tech, tech egg. Uh, how to get better at thinking of a logic for codes? Practice it. Can you explain the DP states once? Will be very helpful. I can repeat that. Not getting the logic, can you repeat? Okay, let's try that. Mm. So some elements were already considered. They were some on the on the left. And let's say we are right now here. This is I. Maybe I points to this number, maybe this number, I just think about a vertical line. What then? Maybe we want to continue a segment that we already started. So a segment like that. We don't care what exactly numbers were there. So we don't care if maybe, uh, we don't care about the length of this segment. We don't care about what numbers are there exactly. We care about the sum. So if there are numbers 7, 2 and minus 3, I know that possible sum of such already started segment is 7 plus 2 minus 3, which is 6. And I take maximum of those. This will be up to this position. 
suffix with best sum, biggest sum. And I will consider continu continuing this thing. If there is 2 here, then for this new i, the best suffix will be 6 plus 2. But what also what is possible is that I have some suffix where I removed one element already. And among those possibilities I want the best one to maybe continue it in the future. I don't care where this element that is removed uh, is, what is its position. I just want to find the best suffix up to position i with one element already removed. The best means the one with maximum sum of non-removed elements. And here possibility for that. Mm, so the drawing shows a possibility of suffix with one element removed and sum 9. Maybe there is something better. Maybe this, uh, say, green one, this one will give us a better sum, either without element removed or with element removed. Then this is the value I store. And if I have those values computed optimally, I want to move to the same thing for the next i after considering this one new number that could be negative then I need to consider that maybe a moment ago I had suffix that is without uh, removed element but here there is something very small or not that small but considering something doesn't hurt so then up to this position this is a possible suffix like with one repeat removed number I can just take six Without removed number, I can take 5. And this is what mm, my transitions here do. They consider, oh, not this code, this one. They consider here from suffix with already deleted element, if I expand it by AI, I get again suffix with one deleted element, or I take suffix without removing everything, and then I remove AI. This is why here I don't add it to the sum, because it's removed. So yeah, something like that. Uh, I like the way you conceptualize problems, I need to practice this more. Yeah, it's about experience. Do you double in CTFs or any other type of programming contests? And no, just algorithms, some simple like AI writing a bot for a game, it's also cool. I do algorithms. Will you cover DP with strings in current stream? If I will encounter such a problem, DP with strings doesn't differ from other uh, other types of DP much. What would be the prerequisites of competitive programmer's handbook? Given that I just know how to code and have n never really tried algorithms and I want to work on CSES problems. At I think if you know a programming language like C++, Python or Java, you can go read competitive programmers handbook without more prerequisites. But knowing some math helps. Though this is something that it's hard to catch up with. It's a skill from school. Maybe something hard now. Make array strictly increasing. Given to integers, oh, I saw this problem a few days ago. Somebody linked it to me. Given to integer arrays, return the minimum number of operations, possibly zero, needed to make array one strictly increasing. It's a cool problem. In one operation, you can choose two indices and do the assignment. Is the, if there is no way to make array one strictly increasing, return minus one. Let's work with this example. Mm. I will copy that. This is make array strictly increasing. Is there a way to extend that? Mm.
Okay, we have array one, five, three, six, seven that we want to make increasing. Now there is also second array four three one. What we can do is we can take any element from the first array and we can replace it with something from the second array. Like we can replace this six with a four because four is here. Mm. Our, upper, our goal is to make the first array strictly increasing. There can be no ties. Uh, the goal is to make the first array strictly increasing. And it might be impossible. There was some example in the statement given where the answer was minus one, what meant not possible. Mm, what is here optimal? Replace five with three. This change maybe with blue, change this into three, change this into four. Then we have array one, three, four, six, seven, and it's strictly increasing. If we care about increasing array, it might be good to just go from left to right. And then after we already modified in some way a prefix, like one, five, three, that was the prefix, Maybe not here. Mm, I will move this. This was that second array. Uh, if we have some prefix already, one, five, three, and we modified it, it we modified it in some way. What is what is important so far? The usual question that works for almost any DP problem. Because we minimize the number of changes, it's important how many changes we made, and also what is the value, the new value of the last element. Because this is something that we need to compare with the next element that we'll consider in a moment. It doesn't matter if 5 was changed to something small or not. It doesn't matter whether this one was changed at all. It's matter what is the new value of 3. For example, if the new value is 4, then we know the next number should be at least 5. From this, I get the idea that it should be dp of position i and new value, say, v, like value. The value can either be what was there a moment ago or something from the new array, like fr something from that second array that is given, because we can replace values with something from that second array. I will, what I will do then? n is array one size, maybe it's easy to mess up those two arrays, we'll call them a and b. Mm. This time I will make two-dimensional array. Maybe this time let's make it global, just to show a different type of code. Size is, this is max. dp of max, max. Mm, and now, dp of i v is mean number of changes up to position i to make to make i i to be v but the values are up to 1 billion so instead of that we'll say to make it to be b of v because new value of ai must be something from BV. For um, for everything, later I will care about complexity. I want to create some polynomial solution, and then get rid of one loop. There are many techniques for that, like I showed you before prefix sums for some problem. For every element, for every position of i, then. Mm, for every 
previous value this will be the val new value of the previous element, element i minus 1 for every new element, v1 if b of v0 is smaller than b of v1 then dp of i plus 1 i v1 is minimum of itself because we minimize dp of i minus 1 v0 plus 1 that's roughly what I want to do if number i minus 1 was changed into v0 then as long as the new number is greater I can change it and then the number of changes up to i minus 1 plus 1 is what I have uh, for now okay what else we need to do we need to consider that maybe we don't change a number then we don't add one uh, so in my definition let's say dp of i b dot size so this is like maximum means not changing at all uh, so numbers from 0 to b size minus 1 represent some numbers from array b but here I will iterate up to this thing and I will say value 0 is uh, v0 is b size if yes then I take the previous value of that a of i minus 1 otherwise b of v0 what happens is that um, 1, 5, 3, let's say. This number either stays as that value, maybe let's talk about it in terms of 5. Uh, dp of this i and uh, dp of this i, this is i, and 0 means that this number was changed into the first element of the second array. If here we have 1, it's the next element of the second array and so on. But if we here have not 0 but 3 which is equal to the size of that second array it means 5 did not change and this is what I check here if v0 is that then a of i minus 1 otherwise the element of second array same here and now compare values sounds good answer is infinity as infinity I will set billion plus 5 iterate over B and answer is mean of answer and dp of the last i which is a size minus one mm, v here i iterate over what will be the last then the new value of the last number any value is okay for me i just take the best scenario if answer is inf return minus one otherwise return answer what else is missing uh, I iterate from i0 and here I check i minus 1 this is bad and I will get some errors instead I want to initialize the dp of 0 something initially so dp of 0 b size is 0 this means not changing the first element but everything else let's keep v for that v is index in array b dp of 0 v is 1 changing the first element to b of v uh, this one means one change already mm. 
Okay, and here we had plus one, but in some cases we should not add one. And that's first thing. Then the next one is we should first be up to resize dp of ev is in inf. Mm, otherwise everything is zero after minimizing it's still zero and here it's not one it's uh, if v1 v1 is b size if yes then zero otherwise one the equality means we don't change the element we stay it as it is We leave it as it is. Time limit exceeded. Oh, I didn't. Uh, I forget about the part when I should care about complexity now. I do that during code forces problem uh, contests. Mm, here I focus on explain, explaining. My complexity is size of A times size of B times size of B. It's very easy with DP usually because you just see what for loops you have. It's actually harder with recursive DP because then it's not that trivial. And where when constraints are up to 2000, I can only have quadratic complexity, not cubic one. So I need to get rid of one of the um, one of the for loops. And here, if the second array is big, Let's say it has numbers instead of 4, 3, 1, it has numbers 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 28. And the previous number was 15. It doesn't make any sense to change the next number to 25 or 28. Also, it doesn't make any sense to change into one of those. So I will here say. Uh, If v0 is different than b size, maybe I will create a vector of important indices to check. Now, if v0 is b size, then just check everything, just like you did. Actually, here we should sort the array and do binary search, but it turns out not to be important for complexity. And this is pushback v1. Otherwise, and this is pushback just mm, b size. We need to check possibility of not changing the next element. And this is pushback v0 plus 1, the next element, assuming that those are sorted. So here I will sort b begin b end and can there be repetitions mm. they can so just to make sure i will remove the repetitions there is some comment for that b resize ink, uh, b begin b end then b begin you should learn in lo your language how to remove repetitions in an array and this is pushback that unless it's outside of the array is that possible I don't think it's possible then here v1 we iterate in indices only and here if the previous element was changed we only consider the next bigger element as a new one as I drew here if the previous one was 15 you shouldn't consider 25 as the next element only 20 makes sense and maybe we will not change the next one but if the previous element is not changed here we could binary search the one reasonable number but i will just consider all of them because this just happens for one value of v0 so right now in this is pessimistically has linear number of uh, items so the complexity is a times b 
times size of indices. But almost always size of indices is just two. And only in one case, one in n cases, it has big size. So it's like of n times n plus n squared. Run code. And yeah, problems like that are easy for me because they are similar to competitive programming. Time limit exceeded still. Mm, I didn't expect that. Maybe maybe I wasn't right about this thing with uh, complexity. Strange, strange. Okay, I have the following idea. I will say A is vector of int, mm, maybe A clear, B clear, put that many elements and lead code displays the time it takes my code to run and i want to see if it's like 100 milliseconds or what it's already almost one second here i will because i can use a computer i will count the number of operations i do roughly i think that this is the most important place i will here write plus plus operations and then at the end maybe just return the number of operations The number of operations was 3 million, which is fine, it should be fast. Unless this is not my slowest uh, piece of code. This is constant. Maybe push back into a vector is that slow, but I don't think so. Every time we are in the indices, I increase operations. What about this part? No, it's just quadratic. I now play with code that has just uh, with test where there are thousand elements in A, thousand in B. Then quadratic complexity in C++ should work under hundred milliseconds. I think. I hope it's run with O2 optimization. Is there something here that is not constant? Hello, Bartek. Uh, I will read comments quickly. Mm. Some math topics. I don't have recommendations of uh, recommendations on math. Why are you not uploading it on your main channel so that many viewers would learn from it? Uh, everybody can learn also from this channel. It's the read frequently asked questions. There is bigger description, like more elaborate answer to your question. Can you solve wiggle subsequences of lead code DP and uh, maybe later? But I will soon finish the stream, by the way. I plan to stream only for like hour and a half today. Would you recommend any books to learn math? Not only for CP, but for math contests as well. I don't know what to recommend on math. Mm. Binary search. I think I have quadratic complexity, so I don't need to speed this up complexity-wise. Explain this. Okay, I will do. 
uh, need code or code forces depends on what you want to train for. Okay, uh, value zero is that. I, I can explain that. So this thing is, I said that v0, that is b size, is a fake value that represents not changing the element. If that's the case, then the value zero is that previous, uh, the new value of ai minus one is still the old value. Otherwise, it's apparently changed to b of v0. Okay, what about this? If if I here hit continue, is it still slow? Yes, it is. If I here hit continue, is it slow? Yes. If I here continue. I want to figure out which part is slow. Putting continue after that gave me 16 milliseconds. Possibly this, for, this whole loop was optimized. Now it's slow. So the issue is not in this part of code. Is it possible that vector is that slow? Maybe they don't have auto details. It called compilation comment. I don't think this is what I'm looking for. Mm. I could run this locally. Maybe I can run it on ID1. Mm. And main solution x, x make array increase, increasing of a and b. To be of three four. There is a playground on lead code. Okay, but does it tell me how it's compiled? My issue is I don't know if lead code compiles with O2 optimization flag, which is huge. It changes the running speed like times five or times ten. I want to see what is the running time uh, on ID one. It's fast. It's very, very fast. And if I don't continue and I want to print the answer, and maybe mm, reverse A, then we need some changes. I will also reverse it here in lead code without continue. Here it took 50 milliseconds, and this is what I would expect. Here it took almost one second. Okay, uh, I think they don't use O2 optimization flag. And if that's the case, maybe I should avoid this vector of indices. I can do that. L let me try some hacks. So this, mm, this is what I should try. And then for in the v1 in b dot size and v0 plus 1 
only check those two values. And then we don't need a vector of indices. And creating a small new vector is slow. Maybe just because it wasn't optimized, it was uh, it was bad. Okay, now it it's sped up to fifty milliseconds. Maybe that was the the reason. Creating a lot of small vectors, but I'm used to doing everything with auto optimization flag. Then it doesn't matter. The complexity was good. That is important. Mm. Output shouldn't be that big. Do I do something incorrectly? Oh, operations. I return the number of operations. Minus 01 flag. Thanks, Alex. Uh, okay, so maybe that's the reason. In ID1, the same thing worked 10 times faster, and I would get accepted first time. We could add here binary search at one moment. So instead of doing this part linearly, I could add binary search, but it doesn't affect the complexity. We do it only once every n repetitions. Mm. How can I improve my DP? Practice DP. Mm. What time is it? I have enough time for one more problem that I'm going out of home. Mm, I mean, I'm leaving home. Uh, I wanted DP problems. Somebody suggest suggested one thing with sequences. Can you solve Wiggle sub subsequences? The statement is quite long. Follow up. Sometimes follow ups are interesting. Any resource to learn DP? Google. A sequence of numbers is called a wiggle sequence if the differences between consecutive numbers strictly alternate between positive and negative. I guess it's a zigzag. The first difference might be either positive or negative. Mm, for example, this is a wiggle, uh, wiggle sequence. Yeah, so it's like a mountain that goes up and down. Given a sequence of integers, return the length of the longest subsequence that is wiggle sequence. We need to remove some elements, not a lot of them, such that the remaining ones, the remaining ones, will go up and down. Can you do it in O of n time? I would do it with something like a segment tree, and it would be n log n. The easy solution is something like n square, where dp of i2 is max length up to i, where i is also taken, and this second dimension means, means whether we went down to i or up. Max is... Let's create a vector this time, let's do it nicely vector of int dp of n is nums length n vector of int 2 for every new element dp of i0 is dp of i1 is 1 it's possible to have length 1 if you just take this element but also for every previous element, if let's call this a, a of 
j is smaller than a of i, mm, so then going, let's say that dp of i0 means we went down to i. If this is smaller than dp of i0 is acceptable, so dp of i1 is max of itself and dp of j0 plus 1. If a j is greater than a i, don't use else here because maybe those two elements are equal, then nothing is for nothing is allowed. Then the opposite thing. And also answer is max of itself, dp of i0, dp of i1. We can finish wherever we want. But I don't think I can do it in linear time. No length, size. Six, six, submit. Now, I see a way to do it in n log n time. This is wiggle subsequence. Three, seven, six. And that is mm. we can first compress numbers to make them from 1 to n instead of 1 to billion and then put a segment tree over values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on it's a segment tree when we have a new number, say 4, and we want to go up, up to 4, and to compute this dp of i1, then we are interested in maximum among those positions, in a tree that stores the best values so far of dp of going down to such a number. Then dp of mm, i1, 1, is max of previous dp, previous dps uh, of 0, but here what we have is only those where value was smaller than 4, but that we can read from segment 3 in logarithmic time. And I will think for a moment about a linear solution, this would be of n times log n. I don't see that instantaneously. Have you tried this? Cons Good luck in the cons today. Thanks. I will try to compete in code forces round today. How to solve it for n equal 1 million? n log n would work, but I will think about linear one. You should come to India. I was already there twice. Maybe we'll come in the future again. How to solve this DP problem? I don't want to think about it. There is a greedy solution that can solve this problem in linear time. Oh, maybe it's indeed not DP. I was focused on solving deep eight uh, like dynamic programming way because the tag was dynamic programming or somebody told me that mm, indeed maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense to wait for a long time what about this so is it true maybe that's enough max of zero and i minus five unless there are repetitions. I will remove repetitions. A resize, link A begin, A end, minus A begin. So if two adjacent elements are equal, then I remove them. And then my claim is, my guess, is that maybe we shouldn't wait for a long time to take a new element. 
instead of iterating from zero, I just iterate over last five elements. Maybe even last three elements will be enough. No, not enough. Then I'm worried that just tests are weak. Four, <coughs> last four in the elements were enough. Oh, let's try to prove it or find a counterexample. Mm. So if optimal solution takes this, say, seven, it went down to seven, and then there is something here say four elements and then after that it's good to take this 50. How do you prove that your thinking is correct in DP? Just like in any other thing. It's the proof is a series of like lemmas of implications that are logically correct. How to prove that I don't need to care about those? This proof might be very hard. It would be easier to check that by writing a brute force. Maybe this is what I will do. Mm. Brute. Repeat a lot of times n is random number between one and fifty. Also generate limit for numbers. put those numbers each between 1 and C and then solution X brut Y assert X dot what was the name of a function? we go max length of A I need to make a copy because one thing can copy, we can modify the vector. It's equal brut dot uh, same name of a copy. And otherwise say OK. And actually, instead of brut, I will say that this is again solution, but this solution also will get limit. Will, it will check that many last elements. And run. Limit was not declared. Oh, uh, I want to check that limit 4 is as good as limit 6. And the name is Y. I have a, I have been practicing. Oh, random error. Uh, what about that five is as good as seven? I have been practicing CP for almost a year now, but I haven't made much improvement. My code forces rating has never gone beyond fourteen hundred. Would you help me figure out where I? Or am I going wrong? You can Google your question. You can go to my GitHub wiki and mm, read something about how to practice. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Maybe you're solving too easy or too hard problems. But if you know something that you didn't know a year ago, if uh, you are able to solve some problem that you wouldn't solve a year ago, then you make a progress. 
then you're making some progress. So by the fact that limit of five wasn't enough, I guess that my solution isn't correct. <laughs> mm. I'm trying to understand the question by Bartek. Uh, here, five wasn't enough, so now I change it to six and it passed tests, but maybe it's just it was lucky and one million tests wasn't enough to catch the mistake. Uh, so yeah, just weak tests in lead code. Somebody said there is a greedy solution. Yeah, I guess if there is a linear solution, then it should be greedy because this DP approach is hard to improve. There is also that n log n one. What can we do greedily? We can... Um, we can think for this length already, what is the smallest number that we can get as the last one and the biggest one? Maybe something like that. And then... Yeah, I'm not sure about it. And I would like to finish in a moment. So I will take... Hi, math buddies. Uh, discuss... Let's see the solution. Blah, blah, blah. What? Max wiggle sequence length so far at index y. This is what I did. And then we only look at the previous number. I don't understand why it works. Is that correct? This greedily takes. If the next number is greater, then I agree that up of i can be down of i minus one plus one. Uh, it says it can be done in our phone. Yeah, here we only use the previous value, so we don't need to remember anything before index i minus one. This one isn't like an interesting part at all. And I just wonder why this is correct. I will try to understand it with like the drawing. So if after like ten and going down to let's say the next number, somebody was there before ten then the next number is 5. And we say that we, we rewrite up of that. Mm, so we consider this thing immediately. Maybe later... Yeah, so down of i is up of previous 1 plus 1. I agree with that. But then going up to 10 it had some value already x and we say that this is also possible here x if there will be 8 later it doesn't make sense to say that after 10 we should take 8 down it's better to just go to 5 yep and if we should go up from 5 to 8 or to let's say 15 indeed we can get from 5 to that instead of going from 10 it's only easier this is why we could rewrite that. Okay, now I understand the solution, but it wasn't easy. Mm. 
No, it's different than what I thought about. For me, up of I was the best sequence ending at number I and being exactly I. And to my solution, to my DP solution, I should add something more to say that in some cases we copy the previous. For me, DP of zero was down and DP of one was up. And in some cases I should copy it from I minus one to I, just like here. Okay. And that will be it. Um, maybe a cool challenge for you, if you want to try, you can give me a test in like Facebook or Discord or whatever, or in comments below the video. Uh, what will be a nice, nice counter test against my solution that I tested here, where I just consider going from last k elements after removing repetitions, I adjacent repetitions. Mm. Uh, I wonder what should be, how the test should look like to make this thing fail. Maybe the numbers should increase for a long time. Like... Yeah, maybe that's the test. The counter test. To create something like... 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then seven or something longer, of course. Oh, I, you don't see it. Nine, ten, and so on, hundred, and then after that, ninety-nine. I think the optimal solution should take one, two, one, two, one, then hundred then 99 and it needs to make a jump like that and lead code doesn't have such a test it's done that's an issue with problems that um, i guess that's an issue with platform that has thousands of problems not not all of them will be well prepared uh, code forces problems also from time to time don't have strong tests and my solution passed uh, on LeetCode. It get accepted, but it is not correct. I understood that only thanks to here checking it myself. And I will finish in like one minute. Later today, or I don't know, maybe tomorrow, I will try cutting some parts of this stream and uploading to the main channel as an experiment. You can contribute a test case uh, contribute. Here we go. Because your tests are weak, my solution passes even though it's wrong. Is it that incorrect solution? Oh, it's not uh, this problem. Because my wrong solution passes your tests. Will I get points because of that? This is pending. Contribute a test case plus 100. Redeem. What will I get? By the way, contributing a question, like if that includes preparation, it is a lot of work. I should add 60 more tests and I have a t-shirt. I don't think that's nice money per hour, it's still something. Mm. Can average mind do go good coding with hard work? 
Yes, I guess. I never tried lead code premium premium. I think the cool part is that you get those things like I don't know if something is well some parts of those lectures are hidden in binary tree or they are not hidden. I saw oh yeah some of them are hidden. I think those are valuable things. Plus seeing which company has the problem, though on the other hand so on one hand, you should learn algorithms if you want to be good in coding, in coding interviews as well. On the other, indeed, some questions are repeated within a company. This has some value. Okay, it's 1 p.m. I will later see what were the average numbers on Twitch and YouTube. Right now we have, oh, that's quite nice. We have 12 on Twitch. Mm, I guess because it's lead code and thanks to that there are some viewers. My boring, like if I put a boring programming stream in a name, it isn't that good. I don't know what is right now on YouTube. Thirty-eight. The question, if, if you don't know, is whether I should keep streaming on Twitch or just stick to YouTube. And uh, okay, that's it for today. How long? See frequently asked questions in the description. Um, I didn't compete on lead code so far because it's the middle of the night for me. It's a wrong time zone. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. This is Eric Tattoo channel on YouTube, but also there's Eric Tattoo without a number. Links are in the description. And yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.